Well, I uh, I uh, I thought I was going to spend more time on this because I f I realized that uh, this um this basic like uh, amplified circuits is very important. If you don't understand, if you don't set up a foundation to understand the basics like biasing, like the small signal model, the basic amplifiers, you were you're bound to fail the class because starting from chapter eight, still manageable. By chapter nine, you will get lost. By chapter 10, you will go nowhere. So this is the foundation. I mean, I always have a like analogy between building a house. You got to build the foundation. If you don't build the foundation, it's okay you build the first floor, but it's going to start to tilt. By the time you build the third floor, it's going to collapse. It's basically the same thing. You got to build your foundation on this one. So that's why we uh, thought I would spend a little bit more time on the basics. And, and today I'm gonna uh, go through a few more things. So hopefully this will give you a better idea of uh, you know what it looks like to, um, to build the amplifier. So this is like the, the MOSFET, the BJT, a single, MOSFET and BJT sometimes are called discrete component, like a single one, it is a building block of um, integrated circuit. Uh, it's, it's the smallest element like in building integrated circuit. And by chapter eight, we're gonna use more single MOSFET to build a little bit more complex block. And by chapter nine, uh, we're gonna build uh, even larger building block, like we call it a differential and a multi-stage amplifier. And then once you get to your real IC, like any any computer, any phone, any anything today that you have a you have a microchip that you see like this big, you can get a million transistors here. A million of them. Like every single one here is duplicated a million times on a single small, like one square centimeter IC. But they operate, they operate based on the very basic principle that we learn here. So that's why we need to get understand this little thing and then we expand and expand and expand. Um, by the time you finish this class, you go to uh, something like 530, something like a 502, uh, you know, you start to learn a integrated circuit. That's where you really don't look at this little thing anymore. I mean, this thing is, is no longer like a, something that uh, you need to pay attention because you're building a much larger circuit. Okay, so last week, we uh, on Monday, on Monday this week, we finished it here to look at the biasing of BJTs. And this is a very simple uh, biasing circuit for BJT. We use VDD the same voltage source to bias uh, the BJT, uh, the MOSFET. And then because the MOSFET has no current at the gate, so therefore RG1 and RG2 are in series. They form a voltage divider. Therefore we can calculate VG at the gate to be a voltage divider. If you know RG1 and RG2, you can easily find what the voltage is gonna be at VG the source is grounded. So therefore, Vg is equal to Vgs. And in order for this circuit to be in saturation, which is what we needed when we use them as an amplifier, we need to have Vgs larger than Vt, which is a threshold voltage, typically 0 0.5 to 1.5 volts. And then the second condition has also to be met. VDS has to be larger than VO. VO is the over voltage. And that is equal to VG minus VT. So when you do this circuit, you got to make sure that you know, everything is correct. For example, in this case, if we have an example, just give you, if we have an example saying that uh, RG1 equal to, um, 200K and RG2 equal to 100K. 
and uh, weight equal to one volt, uh, and ID, in this case, uh, based on those calculations already given, let's say at uh, one milliamps, and also RD at uh, say five kilo ohms. So in this case, we can calculate our VG equal to 100 over 300 times 10, which give you 3.3 volts. And this is larger than VT. VT is one. So it is in, it is, a, it is not in cutoff. I can only say it's not in cutoff, but I don't know whether it's in, in the triode or saturation yet. So the way to identify whether it's in saturation, well, now we calculate uh, VDS. So VDS basically in this case is equal to VD because VS is grounded. And VDS is equal to, uh, or VD is equal to VDD minus ID times ID, ID times RD. And ID here is one million, and RD here is, um, what did I give you? 5K. So it's gonna be 10 minus um, one times, Five, one milli times five k, so that gives you five volts. So this is five volts, and this five volts is larger than. Uh, it's larger than v t v t minus v t v t minus v t three point three minus one is two point three. So this five is larger than um, two point three. So therefore, this circuit is in uh, saturation mode. But if I change i if I change i d to if I change RD to say, um, I, I'll do it on this end. If RD is changed to eight kilo, what do you think will happen? Which didn't change, right? So we didn't change RG1, RG2. Now, if I change RD, VD will change because VD is equal to VDD minus ID times RD, right? So ID didn't change, ID is one. So now what do I get for VD or VDS? VDD minus ID times RD, which is 10 minus eight times one, which gives you two volts. And this is less than VDS minus VT, which is this here is, is um, 3.3 minus one, which is equal to 2.3 volts. So that two volts, so now it's less than that. What do you say about the MOSFET? It's in tri mode. So it's in tri mode. But the previous example here, it's in saturation mode. So that's what we get from the MOSFET. So first of all, you know, we, we summarized here. When you do the calculations, you have to make sure VGS is larger than VT, and VDS is larger than VO, VO is VGS minus VT. So those two conditions are to match. If you look at this circuit, compared to the previous one uh, on the previous slide, let me show you one, once again this slide. On this slide, what are the major differences do you see? What are the major differences? Yes. The, there is a resistance attached to the source. Yes, you're right. The things that change over here doesn't really matter very much, but what changes is RS. So now what's important is you notice that here VGS is no longer VG. So VGS is really what? VGS equal to, in this case, the VG minus VS. Now VS in this case is what? See, S, RS is grounded. So the voltage over here is RS times RS. So VGS is VG minus VS. That's the huge difference. So if you apply this example to the previous example, if you add something at the, at the emitter, you will have a big difference. Yes, go ahead. I, S is what? It's the same thing because there's no current at the gate. It's always the same thing, mm -hmm. right? So this is, 
important that now you can get a, if, if you, if somebody tells you, like in this, like we can have another example here. Let's say VG is equal to, uh, in the previous example, 3.3 .3 volts. Let's do the same thing. So suppose that we got VG 3.3. .3. And now we have ID, or ID and IS equal to each other, and equal to uh, one milliamps, but RS equal to, let's say two kilo ohms. And if we connect the circuit with the same circuit before, 10 volts, and this is five kilo ohms. You see what happens now? You have VG is 3.3, but you have VS equal to two times one, two kilo ohm times one milliamp, we get two volts. So now your VGS equal to only 3.3 minus, uh, you know what? I'm gonna change this to three kilo ohms because that will be more. So I'm gonna change this to three kilo ohms. So now I'm gonna three K times one milli. So this is gonna be three volts and 3.3 .3 minus three. So in this case, we GS is less than VT. So what do you say about the MOSFET? No, no. So look at it here. VGS has to be larger than VT, you know, for the MOSFET to be not in cutoff. Now it's less than that. What would you conclude? It's in cutoff. So this is very important. Why every time you see, you have to, you, I use this, this example because I want to emphasize, you have to compare VGS to VT, not VG to VT, because VG is not necessarily the same as VGS. So yeah, we got the calculations. Um, okay. So um, now, what you have also, what you buy you the on the previous example, yeah, you have something to bias. Uh, yeah, you have something to bias. Like we have RG one, RG two. But once you have this biasing, what do you do with the uh, small signal, which is really what we use as amplifier? Well, we can, can we can connect a small signal to the gate. We can connect small signal to the gate with a capacitor. And uh, this RSG, RSIG, is the internal resistance of the source. Now, if you have a sensor, for example, the sensor gives you output voltage. And then that sensor always have an internal voltage, I mean, internal resistance. So that's what it replaces work. There's a small signal, like a sensor output. There's the uh, in, internal like impedance or output impedance of the source. And this is a capacitor. So here I want to uh, explain a few things. One is that for DC, last class we said that for DC, what happens with the capacitor? It's an open circuit. So it does not change the biasing. Because when you open that, the DC biasing circuit becomes exactly the same thing as we analyzed before. Now with AC, what happens? The capacitor becomes a short circuit. So right away, the, 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 the circuit becomes like this. Oh, there's a resistor here too. So the circuit becomes something like this. And this is kind of the the overall circuit, but if you know to, to get the, to the small signal, remember the pi model. So now you can do this. You can derive the pi model to be, um, we can draw the, the pi model of the MOSFET. So always draw the model of the MOSFET first and then figure out which one is to connect to which. So in this case, what is connected to the gate? 
Don't look at this one, just look at this one. What is connect to the gate? There are a couple of things, yeah? Quite a few things connected, right? Well, so first of all, RG2 is connected for sure, right? And then it's connected to ground. So let's draw RG2. What else is connected? RG1, okay. So RG1, and then we'll connect RG1 to where? To ground, because the DC becomes a voltage source becomes a short, so it's to ground. And what else connected? RSIC, yeah. And RSIC through this internal resistance. Okay, so that we got to that. And what is connect to the source? RS, okay. And now this is also the ground. And what is connect to the train? RD. Now in this case, we don't consider RO. If you, if, you, if you also consider RO, then you would draw another one in parallel with RD. So this is okay. So once you get this equivalent circuit, you can calculate um, VGS. So how do you calculate VGS? VGS times uh, so this is uh, GM VGS. So if we look at the, the circuit on this side, we can easily calculate. What do you divide? This two becomes in parallel, and then this one and this one are in series. So we can calculate Vg quite easily, which is what you divide between, between this and this, right? So we can calculate Vg, which is equal to basically Rg1, Rg2 divided by Rsig plus Rg1. Rg2 times V. So this is where the most important part you have to pay attention to. Otherwise, you'll make a mistake because you will see problem like this. Is Vg same as Vgs? Yes. No. Yes. No. Vote. Let's have a vote. Yes. How many say yes? Is VGS, is VGS same as VG that we calculated over there? Is VGS here? How many say yes? Raise your hand. Nobody's brave enough. How many say no? Raise your hand. Almost everybody. That's great. Why well, did no? Because this is not ground. Okay? So VG is relative to ground. See? So, but this is not ground. So what is VGS then? Well, which is VG minus VS. Well, we don't know VS yet, but we can calculate it because we know this current. So this voltage here can be easily calculated, which is RS times GM times VGS. So what is VGS there? The VG minus this. So you can calculate VGS equal to VG minus GM times VGS times RS. So from here, because there's VGS on both sides, right? On this side and that, you can move RG, VGS on the other side, you can easily calculate VGS. So now once you have VGS, you, you can calculate VO. Finally, VO is equal to GM times VGS times RD, minus, minus sign, okay? Don't forget the minus sign. So which minus GM times VGS times RD. So by this time, you already calculate the input output as a function of uh, VGS here, but VGS can be replaced by V signal. So V signal uh, is expressed over the last equation over there. You can finally get the gain. So gain is defined as V we all over with SIG. 
this is whole process how you calculate. If we don't have RS, this this problem becomes much easier to do. Okay. So the previous example, looking at the, sorry, um, is looking at the biasing the, uh, the we really the biasing is down by VDD. You see the voltage divider, but the next example is looking at a different way to bias BJT bias uh, MOSFET, which we they use minus VSS minus VSS. Well, you might say, how do you bias V uh, the MOSFET with the minus VSS? Well, the goal is to create a VGS. The goal is to create a VGS that is larger than VT. And in the meantime, you guarantee that VDS is larger than VO. Okay, so those are the two things that you have to guarantee. So in this example, in the DC biasing, uh, because there's no current, again, so this RG doesn't do anything, right? Because there's no current, so the voltage drop over here is zero, this is zero, so what is the voltage over here? Zero, okay? So which is zero? And what is which yes then? Well, which yes is mm, which minus, yes, that's good, here's a yes. So minus Vs, but which is zero, so which this equal to, you're right, minus Vs. But what is minus Vs? What is Vs? How much is Vs? How do you calculate Vs? So see, this is Vs. So if I use Vs minus, minus Vss, what do we get? We get the voltage drop on this Rs, right? So if you, have trouble writing like uh, exactly the final format, you can always do is to use this like a loop or node analysis. So in the case, I always make mistake. So what I do is I write this, I write Vs minus, minus Vss, see one voltage minus another voltage. That gives me Is times Rs. Well, in this case, Rs is same as Id because there's no current in the gate. So this is equal to ID times RS. So now I got VS equal to uh, sorry, uh, minus VSS plus ID times RS. So this VSS is bound to be less than zero. It has to be because the gate is ground. So the VSS has to be lower, right? has to be lower to make VGS positive, larger than VT. So this is how you would calculate the DC bias. And then, uh, okay, so this is another example, which is very similar to what we did before. So I probably don't have to go too much details. I can just simply explain. So the top is 15 volts, and this is seven mag, the other is eight mag. So eight plus seven is 15, right? This twin series. And what you divide it gives you how many volts? Seven volts here and eight volts up. So VG is seven volt. And when VG is seven volt, uh, ID is given 0 0.5. So you can calculate easily the voltage here is five volts. And uh, 50 minus 10 times 0 0.5 gives you voltage right away at 10 volts. So now all I need to do is I can write down here so that you understand. So VG is equal to seven volts. And Vd equal to 10 volts. And Vs equal to 5 volts. And if you still wonder, this is the voltage divider. This is, this is 7 over 8 plus 7 times 15. And this is, Vd is 15 minus 10 times 0 0.5. And this is 10 times 0 0.5. Okay, so now how much is VGS? Let's calculate together. VGS equal to VG minus VS. So VG is seven minus VS is five equal to two volt. Okay, so the VT is one and VGS is two, so that's okay. Now let's calculate VDS. VDS is VD minus 
we s is equal to 10 minus 5. That gives you 5 volts. So which s is 2, which is 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. So 5 larger than minus 1. So this is in saturation. Okay. So that's, again, just give you, you know, different examples to, to do um, calculations and figure out um, how to make sure it is in saturation. Now, this is very popular circuit in MOSFET. They connect the gate to the drain, gate to drain. But there's an RG over there in, the, in, the, in that circuit. But because there's no current in the gate, right? No current, always say no current. So how much voltage drop on the RG? Zero. If the voltage is zero, it's like something, it's like short circuit, right? Okay, so they basically this circuit is equivalent to This circuit is equivalent to this one because there's no current anyway, no water drop with RG. In theory, it's equivalent. But that RG, what the RG does is that in the future, we'll see. It's going to change the input output impedance because the resistance is there. But in this case, because in the DC analysis, it really doesn't matter. But what's most significant, it makes a difference. So in this case, what is, what is um, VG and what is VGS? Okay, so we know that Vs is what? Let's do it together always. Zero. And how about Vg? That's also zero. Yeah? How many agree? No. Okay. <laughs> That's wrong. No. Not zero. Okay, so then how, what is Vg then? Vd. Okay, so Vg equal to... Because it connects to Vd, so it has to be Vd, okay? And then what is Vd then? How much is Vd? So usually VDD is given, RD is given, ID is given. So those three things are given. So you should be able to calculate VD equal to VDD minus an RD. So in this case, because VG is equal to VD, and uh, if it is, so this circuit, um, if there's any current, so uh, we want to do some analysis. And this circuit is always, before I, Actually, to an analysis, I will tell you, this circuit is always in saturation. This circuit is always in saturation. You might wonder, why? Well, first of all, let's say it cannot be cut off. That's the first thing we can do. Not being cut off. The way that we, we say it's not being cut off because if it isn't cut off, well, th the best way to Oppose something is to assume it's right, right? Okay, let's assume it's in cutoff. What happens? If you assume it's in cutoff, ID must be. Remember, in cutoff, there's no current, nothing. So ID must be zero. If ID is zero, what the voltage drop on RD? Zero. And then what is VD? No. VDD, right. VDD. So if VD is good, VDD, what is VG? Which is sometimes VDD. So VG is VDD, VD is like 10 volts. It got to be larger than VT. It has to be, that cannot be correct. So that's how I say, okay, not, not in cutoff. That's number one. And number two, okay, if it's not in cutoff, it must be in either trial or saturation. So, which means in, if it's in um, saturation or cutoff, the definition is that Vg is larger than, let's do this. So, Vg must be larger than, in this case, Vg is equal to Vgs, it must be larger than Vt. And we saw that it has to be because otherwise it would have been not in cutoff, right? So, and then we said the VDS. So here we need to calculate VD. what is VDS? VDS equal to VD. 
is S0, and width is equal to VG. So which means this got to be larger than is VG has, well, it's not has to be, which must larger than VG minus VT, whatever VT is. As long as VT is positive, well, this has to be interesting because in, 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 when you go on, move on to the future like uh, classes, you will learn that for some like GFS, they have VT negative. <laughs> okay, for in that case, this circuit may not be correct. But for now, we are talking about MOSFETs and VT is always positive. So if VT is positive, VG, whatever it is, minus VG, well, minus VT has to be less than VG, okay? So then, because VG, we know much, it, it's definitely larger than VT, okay? So in this case, so it is in saturation. So this circuit, why it's popular. By the time next week, Monday, you will see this. We, we will do this circuit, this circuit, very often we do this circuit, okay? So now uh, let's come back to uh, BJTs because for MOSFET, because there's no kernel in the gate, so it's always very simple to do the voltage divider and to do like a biasing. But for BJT, the little trouble is that IB is not zero. So for example, these are the two most popular biasing circuits for BJT. But for this circuit, we have RB1, RB2 in series, that's correct. But this base connect to the middle. But the current in the base is not zero. So therefore, strictly speaking, you cannot use voltage divider to get the voltage at, at the base because it's current. So you would have to do a node analysis, but because the, the BJT is nonlinear, so it's not that easy to do a node analysis. It's a little bit tough, but you can do it. So um, we'll do it, we'll do it. But this, this, this is another circuit. This biasing is a little simpler than the other one because you see that VCC is connect to RB and then connect to gate. But this RB, IB, so there's always a voltage here less than VCC, but not so much. Uh, but still, we cannot get VB right away. We cannot get it right away. So we're gonna take this example here to do uh, analysis. So the first one is, uh, you know, for simplicity, sometimes people assume now, of course, beta is never infinity, but the reason we can do that because IB is typically so small, like micrograms. But I see is typically in the milliamps. It's a hundred times difference, right? So if it's a hundred times difference, usually the impact of IB on this voltage divider is very small. So therefore, we assume IB is zero. So if we if we assume better infinity, and I IB zero, and then VB can be easily calculated. I'm not going to repeat it because this is going to be the same as MOSFET, right? So now no current. Okay, so same. So we're gonna no. But secondly, B is not infinity. So if B is not infinity, what we can do is we can do uh, we can do a little bit difficult, but it can be done. A loop, uh, a node analysis. We're gonna do a node analysis like this. You guys learn a super node, right? In two time, a super node is like a node that can include multiple nodes, but it's a circle. So if you look at the circle, the current going in is going to equal to the current coming out. But there's one thing to notice that the voltage though at every node is different. So you cannot assume that node has the same voltage. No, you cannot do that. But so in this case, you know, the voltage here, for example, is VB, the voltage here is VC, the voltage here is VE, in this case, zero. So let's do the nodal analysis. How much current is coming in here, coming out here, coming in here, and come out here, right? So there are two, two, there are two currents coming in, like from here, this branch coming in, this branch coming in, this branch come out, this branch come out. So we assume VP is given. So now we can do the uh, nodal analysis. Okay. So 
the voltage coming in from RP1, how much is that? Let me, let me give more space here. So it's going to be VCC minus VB divided by RP1, and then plus the other one, which is through so that one coming in, which is, um, let's call it IC. And equal to this one here on the, to RP2 is going to be. And then plus IE. So in this case, we got a, something like three variables, VB, IC, and IE. So we cannot solve it using one equation. However, we are so lucky that we know that IC equal to beta times IB. And IE equal to. And uh, what is IP then? Well, now we have to do a little nodal analysis inside that node. Inside. Now we're going to do the nodal analysis exactly on this node. If, if I look at it here, what is IP? IP is this current minus this current. So right away we said IP equal to this VCC minus VB divided by RB1 minus VB over RB2. So now we got this equation, this equation, well, this two can be considered as one equation. So you replace with IB, you replace IB, now you replace IB with VB, you plug it back, you got the equation really just with VB. So now you can calculate VB. It's, it's, what, it's quite complex, I know. It's, it's not that straightforward to get the actual numeric answer, but this is how you really get the process. You got the equation right, you know, when I taught 210 class, if people got to this point, they get about like 90% of their points. I mean, there's no point to further really to, um, to uh, re, um, redo. Uh, the, uh, the, the other way to do this, instead of doing that super node analysis, we can do a Devonis, Devonis equivalent circuit. So how many of you still remember Devonis equivalent circuit? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, here and there. Okay, well, what, 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 can you explain what the Devonian circuit is? Okay, anybody else? What is the Devonian equivalent circuit? Yes, Pedros? It's almost right, yes. Uh -huh. no. Right, okay. So you guys still got you know, quite a good memory, that's good. So the Devonian equivalent circuit describes that for any linear circuit, nonlinear, no, linear circuit, you can use a equivalent voltage and equivalent impedance. If it's AC, if it's a DC equivalent resistance to represent as a circuit. So what it says that if you get any circuit, any circuit, doesn't matter, black box, you get any circuit, you can replace this circuit with with this. So you might say, oh, why would you do that? Well. If the circuit in the black box is very complex, if we want to show something like here, we want to show the current. If the circuit inside the black box is very complex, you would have to spend a lot of time to write the whole set of equation, like what we did on the previous page. You know, to find out what IL, what IL is. But if you have that equivalent circuit already, you would simply do this. So in this case, you can easily find I 
L equal to which edge over? See, you can calculate IL right away. If you know the equivalence, of course, the first step is to figure out what the equivalent circuit is. So in this example, in order to show for that, what we are doing is we look at here, this part. So we, we redraw this part as voltage source. So this is VCC. So this is, see, what we did is we simply remove the BJT to be a load, like this one here, RL, leave it alone. And we're going to look at only R1 and R2 with the voltage source that I rejoined over here. That's up. And then here, you see, in here, we want to replace the whole thing here with something like this. So what would you do? You still remember anything about solving the Devonian's recurrent circuit? How do you solve the? So with TH is equal to what? VTH is open circuit voltage, and uh, we, uh, an RTH is equal to the equivalent resistance. So in this case, open circuit does not mean open this, okay? It means the load, like whatever the load is. Let me draw that. So whatever this load, like now this is a black box, this is load. So if we open this load, if you open that load, what happens? is we got, we got the open circuit voltage. So this is VTH. So from here you can see, because it's open circuit voltage, we can easily calculate it as RTH equal, uh, I mean VTH. Okay, let's, let me erase this. So equal to VCC over RB1 plus RB2 times RB2. See, that's the, that's the voltage. That's the voltage across RB2, okay, easy. And how do you can get an RTH? Well, basically we have to short the voltage source and open the current source. So this current circuit becomes like this. So here we can further recruit into, we just move the resistance a little bit. See this RTH. So you can see RTH is what? RB1 or B2. So right away you got the definite equivalent this and equivalent to this. So if once you get this point, you will notice that this is the same circuit like this. Gosh, this is easy, right? Basically, that's the same thing, okay? So, yeah, so this is what you have for the equivalent circuit. And uh, um, we already calculated this using IBE. I'm not going to repeat it now here. So I think for the next, uh, um, I think how much, yeah, 30 minutes, we're going to really look at uh, uh, the different amplifiers and then look at how we, draw the uh, DC biasing circuit and a small signal equivalent circuit. So we're gonna start with the common source. So last time we talked about six different amplifiers. Do you, do you guys still remember what are the six different amplifiers? Start with MOSFET. Common gate, common drain, common source, okay? So let me tell you that common source is the most popular one, okay? And common drain is used as well, but not as popular. You know, we'll, we'll, you, know we'll, you have to have common drain as well. Uh, but the common gate is not so much, though. It's a special application. Most of the ICs we use today don't have common gate. But as a principle, you, you have it. Okay, for BJT, what do you have? 
Como sauce? No. Como emitter? Como collector? And como base, right? So similarly, como emitter is the most popular. Como collector is also called an emitter follower. If you remember that, it's called emitter follower. Why is it follower? Because the emitter voltage follows the input, so it doesn't amplify. You get one volt in, one volt out. So that's called emitter follower, but it's positive. And we're going to get to that as well. Common base is used, but not as popular. So it's mostly special applications. The ICs, they don't use common, uh, they don't use uh, common gate, uh, common base amplifier. Okay, so this is um, common source. And also we talk about using capacitors to bypass the uh, AC signal and to open for DC biasing. So in this case, if you look at the middle part, that's the MOSFET that we already talked about many times. And you got the DC biasing circuit, so I can draw the, the, the re, just review. I want to do this again and again, just to enhance your memory. So the DC biasing circuit is gonna be So that's the DC biasing circuit. Because you look at the capacitor, it gets the input out, it gets the load out, it gets the, especially this one here. Especially this one here. You see what it does? For DC, this is open. No. So our equivalent circuit over here has a problem. Yeah? Do you see? Yes? It's, it can still have a resistor. It's called common source with a resistor in the source. Yeah. So in this case, for the DC biasing, I was drawing the DC biasing. Do you see the problem is what I draw? Hmm? The wire? What was missing? What happened at the source? Do you see? I missed something, right? So I missed the resistor at the source. So I have to, oops, oh, 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 no. Oh, okay. I didn't want somebody to teach my class. <laughs> I can teach it. Okay, so um, the we need to draw the, okay, we need to draw this resistor here. Because that resistor, uh, that, that resistor is here. Because for DC, this is open. It didn't open this. So this is still here. Okay, so this is, a, it's a common source amplifier with a resistor at the source, but for small signal, you see what happens. The source is grounded, right? So that, you see now, that makes a big difference. There's a resistor at the source, but it will be grounded for AC because that capacitor will bypass the current, okay? So, so for small signal, so this is DC biasing that I draw on the previous page. And we would certainly again go through the calculations, but here is the um, the small signal model. Now, I can before I present that we can draw this all together just to see how the process will look like. So as I said, we can use the pi model. Uh, pi model is basically the most popular model, and you can always do pi model no matter what happens. But in just some cases, the pi model is a little bit more difficult than the T model. So we, we in this case, we'll, we'll, we'll use uh, the pi model. So we always draw, we always draw the, the pi model first. And then, so let's draw the pi model.
So this is always you start with the MOSFET and then figure out what is connected to which terminal. So we'll just start from the gate and you can let me know what is connected to the gate. There are three things, right? So there's R, RG2, there's R, G1, then what else? R, R6, and also V6, okay? So what is connect to S now? This is where a lot of students make a mistake. Because for AC, the source is connected to ground where the capacitor. So if you really want to draw the, the resistor, it will look like this. It will look like this. So you might say, well, what does it mean? Well, because this is the ground, so this, this becomes a ground, and this is a ground, so nothing here, so the whole thing becomes a ground. So basically, what we do here, uh, to avoid the confusion, we're gonna simply draw, we're gonna simply draw the source to ground. And what is connect to the drain? There is RD and there is a RL. And then this is your output. Okay. So this is a corner circuit, very simple. Now, if you want to solve this circuit, you can first solve for VGS. The VGS is the division between RSG and R. We already did this in the previous example. And output is VO equal to, like, uh, basically, you can write down the so VO is minus GM times VGS times RD in parallel with RL. Right? And VGS, you can calculate it with its voltage divider, which means it's going to be RG1 parallel RG2 R6 plus RG1 parallel RG2 times V6. So plugging that one to the VGS, and you can easily calculate the gain. So that's how you will do this. This is circuit here, okay? Okay, so this is a corner circuit already given, same thing I draw. Um, and then, yeah, so this is basically the same thing, well, consider the RO. So one RO is considered. So one RO is considered basically what we do is we simply add a RO over here. Uh, oh, this is BJT. Sorry, this is BJT. No, I'm I'm I am terribly sorry. So for BJT, we can do the same thing to start with the pi model. So you start with this is the collector, this is the base. This is emitter. Once you draw this one, you figure out like which we start from the base. Which one is what is connected to the base? You look at the base here, there are three things. CC1 is short circuit. So similarly to the MOSFET, you got three circuits. And what is connected to the emitter? Ground, right. Is the, that capacitor? So this is the ground, and what is connect to the output? So now we draw the RO here, so we can draw that, and also because this is ground, so this is ground. So there is RC, and then there is a RL, and this is your wheel. So from here, you can calculate VBE. This is GM times VBE. So your VBE equal to VSIG divided by RSIG plus the three things in parallel, which is R1, RB1, RB2, and R pi. 
So that's VB. And then your VO equal to minus GM times VB times the three things in parallel again. So RC uh, parallel with RL. So you got to, now you plug in VB to the second equation. You got VB here, you plug in VB to here, you got VO, and you can get the gain, which is the gain is going to be equal to VO over VB. Now, in this case, I, I also want to mention a few things. Like uh, what, when we do this calculation, like RB1, RB2, R6 is all given. But the things that are not given usually is, which is GM, because GM has to be calculated from the DC biasing. That's why DC biasing is important, because you have to know GM. And also, there is a RO that also needs to be calculated, and R pi that has also to be calculated from the DC biasing. So those are the things that you need to like, keep in mind. So in our home organic exams, like especially, let's say, exams, sometimes the first step is for you to figure out the DC biasing. And uh, sometimes students forget it because it's a long time ago in the beginning of the semester. By the end of the semester, it's already go back to me. I have all that knowledge. <laughs> but if, so some students are stuck, they just stop. That's not right. Don't stop. Move on to the small signal. Because you, you would tell me saying, well, I did forget about the disabasing calculation, but I know how to do the small signal. If you tell me what the GM, what's the RPI, I can solve the rest of the stuff. You still get half of the credit, maybe more than half, depending on the grade. So don't stop there. You just need to continue to do your work, OK? And then this is a common emitter using pi model. Let's, uh, so probably we can, um, this one has something like RE here, which means when the common emitter, this is no longer ground. So the only difference is that in the pi model, so I'll, I'll, let, I'll leave the rest for you guys, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw the, uh, I'm going to draw the equivalent circuit just for the, for the emitter part so that you know what I'm meant. So the rest of the circuit is the same as the previous page, but the difference here is this RE, because the capacitor only bypass this. They did not bypass this one. So therefore, the emitter will have this. The rest is the same on the previous page, okay? So that's the thing that you have to be careful. Um, you can use T-model, which is in the book. Uh, that'll make your calculation easier because if you don't use the T-model, you see the problem is that when you calculate VBE, so VBE is no longer VB. Let's say you got all the stuff here, da 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 da. So this VBE is going to be VB minus VE. And VE is not known, so you have to plug in VE, because VE is equal to uh, GM times VBE and times RE. So now you get another VBE, so it gets a little bit tricky, so a little bit more difficult. So if you use a T model, it, it greatly simplifies the whole calculation. So that's why some people like to use um, the, the T model. And uh, this is the common base. So I want to draw the equivalent circuit again. Um, we can use, we can do two things here. The first thing is that we can uh, draw the DC biasing circuit and then draw the small signal. So for DC biasing, you see here, open, that is open. So this circuit is very simple for DC biasing. Basically, you have so for this one, uh, because this is grounded for linear mode. This voltage here is 0 
So this is 0 0.7 minus VSS, minus minus VSS, basically 0 0.7. This is minus 0 0.7 plus VSS, divided by R, you get this current, and divided by 0 0.99, you get this current here, and you get current here. So easy to get this biasing. But for small signal, let's do the same, same pi model. Uh, people would use T model all the time, but I like it. Pi model just to show you how this thing can be easily. So again, I'm going to draw this one. So now you tell me what is connected to what the terminal. So for base, what is connected to base? Ground, common base, that's why it's ground. And what is connected to source? There are a couple of things connected to source, right? And then there is uh, two things, at least. One is, now for small signal, this is short circuit. And there's also this thing connected. And what is connect to the output? There's RC, and there is also, and then here is your wheel. You can add an IO here, but if you don't add it, I wouldn't make a big thing about it. So this is your equivalent circuit. So even though we control the equivalent circuit, the reason people use uh, this uh, T model because now you see it's not easy to calculate VBE anymore. It's not easy to calculate VBE because VBE is like in between there, but you don't know the voltage over here. Because this one, this one, even though it looks like they're in parallel, but they're not strictly in parallel, right? So you have to do maybe a source transformation in order to get this two in parallel. So there's a bunch of steps to do. So that's why if you go back to the T model, which is given, in here, it will make your life a lot easier. So that's the T model. So the, the, the blue part, which is originally the pi model, now it comes to T model, it will make it easier. So this circuit already gives you like input resistance, this two in parallel, and output is going to be R4 times IC times RC in parallel with RL. And this IC equal to uh, this V, uh, I over VC, and so on. So this just makes the life a little bit easier. So that's all. But it doesn't mean you cannot solve the previous one. You, you can solve the circuit by just doing some simple mathematics or nodal loop analysis. Yeah. Um, usually, the common source, common emitter, a pi model easier. If the emitter is grounded, it's easier to use the pi model. If the emitter is not grounded, has something on it, the T model is easier. Yeah. So I wouldn't let I wouldn't ask you to use either one. So you would have to um, make your best judgment. And finally, we're going to look at emitter follow-up. So here, let's do um, also two things. One, let's do um, DC biasing. Okay. So for the DC biasing. I'm going to do it on this corner. Uh, for DC biasing, that you can see, uh, the, the two capacitors are going to cut off the input and the output, right? So this, this BJT becomes So that's the DC biasing. Um, now you want to ask, okay, well, how do you calculate the, like um, GM and R pi? And how you have to calculate IC? In calculate IC, you have to calculate IB. But in this case, in this case, the IB and IE and IC, they have some relation. So you know that you can do, like for example, let's do maybe just a quick thing like here. This is VE. So VE is equal to, 
this is VB. So um, we, um, so IB will be like uh, zero minus VB over IB. So in this case, you can understand right away, VB must be negative. Otherwise, your IB will be negative. Otherwise, you cannot do it. So you can calculate IB, but you don't know VB, right? However, we know that VB minus VE equal to 0 0.7. So which means if we can get, if we can get VE, we'll be able to get VB. But we don't know VE. So now we know that VE, no, no, sorry, this is wrong here. So this is minus VE. So VE minus minus VE divided by RE, that gives you what? That gives you IE. So by doing, if you know VE, you know RE, so right? So and then IE, VE, so you can get some relations. And also you know that IE equal to beta times IB. So plug in this one here, and here, and here, and you get everything what you need. You get everything you need for doing the DC biasing. If you got IC, you got you can use IC to calculate the GM to calculate R pi and so on. So that's um, so that's what we have for the DC biasing. Then for the small signal, we can still use the pi model. So to draw the pi model, we start with. Again, we start with the BJT. So now we figure out what is connect to the base. Base, there are two resistors. One is RB, this is R pi, and one is R seek. Okay. And what is connect to the collector? What is the, where is the connector, collector connected? It's connected to ground, right? So that's why it's called a common collector because the collector is ground. It's connected to the water source. Water source is ground for AC. And what is the connect to the emitter? There are two resistors. There's one RE, one RL and they both connect to ground. Where's your output? Okay, so this is your uh, equivalent circuit. So the problem over here is, is that GM times VBE. And we, we calculate v GM already from the DC biasing. But the problem is that it's hard to calculate VBE in this case. So VBE is here. We be here. So that we be over here is hard to connect. So the only way to find we be is to do like look, this, please careful. This RB and this one are they in parallel? Are these two in parallel? Why not? Why not in parallel? Because this is connected to ground. This is not connected to ground. So th they're not in parallel. So if you're not in parallel, it, it's difficult to do, to find VBE. So the only way to find VBE is we will have to first find something like here. We, we can do the nodal analysis. We can do nodal analysis here. So we, if we do nodal analysis here, you will have this node here. So we owe, so we have here is, um, this is VBE, so VBE over, uh, sorry, you calculate current in here. So this is VBE over R pi, which is the current going into the node, plus GM times VBE, which is another current going into the node, equal to VO divided by RE, 
plus VO divided by RL. Well, not bad, not that bad. We got VO on this side. Well, if we do that, um, we have, we be, yes. But the only problem, of course, we can now get a relation between VO and VBE, but we still haven't got the relation between V input and VBE, right? So we need to find out what is the relation between VBE and V this. In order to do that, we need to do another node analysis over here. So we need to write another equation here. So another equation over there will be, uh, so this is VBE. So this voltage here is VBE plus VO. You see? The voltage over there, VBE plus VO. So now we have this V sig over here. So we got V sig minus VBE plus VO divided by R sig. That's the current going into the node. You go to the current, which is uh, VBE plus VO divided by RB and then plus VBE over R pi. So basically, now you have this equation over here. You got another equation over here. So it's okay. You have two equations you can solve. So the, eventually, you need to get the gain, which is equal to VO over VC, okay? So that's how you get the final solution. But again, as I said, this seemed to be quite challenging. So that's why in the book, saying we don't want to do the uh, I model, we want to do the T model. So once you get the T model, you put it here. So without RO, this becomes a little easier, but with RO, even with the T model, you still have to write a couple of equations in order to solve the, the game. So it's not that easy. But eventually, what we get, is, I don't have the time to derive the actual relation today, but eventually you will find, next time I'll let you know, but it's in the book, of course you can read it, is that your VO over we think is equal to almost one if I S I G equal to zero. Now, if R the input resistance of the source, if that is zero, you got your output is almost the same as the input, 0 0.99. Okay, so th that's why this is called emitter follower. So emitter follows the input at the base. It becomes the emitter follower. So this is very important because the output is, is same as the input, it's also positive. So one of the big, big questions people ask, what's the point? You got input, same as output, and output, same as input. Why would I just simply use the input? Well, we're gonna demonstrate in chapter eight that there's the input resistance, is the output resistance. If you don't have emitter follower, sometimes the input impedance is so, like, big, you know, maybe I have this one example, then we'll be done. Let's say you get a voltage source, a sensor. The sensor comes with an input resistance of one mega ohm with one volt. And your circuit, let's say this is your load, is a pure resistive, is 1K. How much voltage would you get at the input? One millivolt, it's too small. You cannot amplify it. So I said, what do I do? Well, the thing that we do is try to increase the, the other resistance. Let's say this one here, instead of one kilo ohm, we're gonna do it 10 meg. So now what is your output? 10 meg or one meg? Well, maybe it's not easy, right? If we do nine meg, it's easier. So you got 0 0.9 volts, 0 0.89 volts, right? So now your input is applied to the load. If that input impedance is very big. So the emitter follower has this function. 
it increases the input impedance and decreases output impedance. Output impedance is almost zero. The input impedance is almost like infinity. So that's why the emitter follower is so important. We have to do it. Okay. So I think that's my uh, last slide. It's good that we finish it. <laughs> so we'll see you next week. Well, remember, we have two quizzes next week. So one is on chapter six, one is on chapter seven. <laughs>